Hi everyone, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here with part one of my Christmas 2020 book haul. Hubby bought me 11 books for Christmas, um, so I'm going to show you six in this video and six in the next. And I hear you say, but Graham, you just said he bought you 11 books. I treated myself to one. Um, it's not strictly a Christmas book because I bought it on New Year's Eve, but I'm going to add it in to this haul because, yeah, um, I'm going to try and buy less books in January. <laughs> so this may be part one of only two book hauls you see in January, possibly. We'll see, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Best laid plans and all that. So anyway, let's dive into the books. So the first book that I'm going to show you is one that um, I, I should probably tell you as well, actually, that um, Hubby didn't know what to get me for Christmas and he said, please just share your Amazon wish list with me. So I was like, yeah, okay, there's the link, go for it. And he, <laughs> he almost nearly, well, okay, no. He cleared out a heck of a lot of books on my, uh, on my wish list. Um, and they're all books that I have wanted for Yonks. So yeah, the first one I'm really excited about. It is The Complete Poetry of Maya Angelou. I love Maya Angelou. She's such an inspiration um, and her, her writing is incredible um, and I can't wait to get to it. And it's been blurbed by Toni Morrison, who is another incredible writer. A real original. There is no duplicate. And there isn't. There really isn't. Um, Maya Angelou's poetry, lyrical and dramatic, exuberant and playful, speaks of love, longings, partings, of Sunday night partying and the smells and sounds of southern cities, of freedom and shattered dreams. From her reflections on African-American life, hardship and resilience in the famous And Still I Rise, to her revolutionary celebration of womanhood in Phenomenal Women, and her elegant tributes to President Bill Clinton with On the Pulse of Morning, to His Day is Done for Nelson Mandela. This new complete collected works brings together every inspiring word of poetry by Maya Angelou. And I cannot, cannot wait to get to this because she's Maya Angelou and oh, it's just amazing. So the next one is another one that I'm so excited about. I own multiple editions of this book but not in this edition, and I'm so excited about it. So it's um, Roald Dahl's Matilda by Roald Dahl, illustrated by Quentin Blake. And this is Matilda at 30, the special edition. And she clearly now works as the chief executive <laughs> of the British Library. And it's just fabulous. It's the original story, um, but yeah, she's grown up on the front cover and she works in the British Library. And that is how Matilda would live now. Um, these are just some of the unforgettable characters. So we've got a picture of uh, Matilda Wormwood, a remarkable child with a magical mind. Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood, Matilda's parents, liars, swindlers and TV addicts. Miss Trunchbull, headmistress of Cruncham Hall and the world's biggest bully. Bruce Bogtrotter, cake eating extra chocolate cake eating extraordinaire. These are just some of the unforgettable characters from this classic story by the world's number one storyteller, now with a brand new cover design from Quentin Blake to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the, publish the publication of Matilda. It's just fab. Never be anything by halves if you want to get away with it. Be outrageous, go the whole hog, make sure everything you do is completely crazy. It's, it's so... I shall, I shall read that again because, yeah, I messed that up. Never do anything by halves. If you want to get away with it, be outrageous. Go the whole hog. Make sure everything you do is so completely crazy. It's unbelievable. And I can't wait to get to this again. This is one of my favourite Roald Dahls and I love it. So the next one is um, one that wasn't actually on my uh, Amazon wish list. I think I emailed this, uh, the link to this from eBay um, and hubby, hubby got it for me. So yeah, it's 
Tales of Witchcraft, stories by Stephen King, Robert Block, M.R. James, Saki, E.F. Benson and others. And this is edited by Richard Dalby and it's just fabulous. I love A Tale of Witchcraft. Um, I'm kind of obsessed by the whole idea of witchiness and I love it. Um, and some of these stories sound amazing. <clears throat> In the world of Tales of Witchcraft, nothing is as it seems. In these stories of the supernatural, everything is open to question. The line between good and evil is sometimes exceedingly thin and there is often no means for knowing whether the mysterious events described are the product of forces beyond our comprehension or simply the fancies of an over-imaginative, sorry, an over-active imagination. An over-imaginative imagination. Is that an oxymoron, possibly? Or just me being stupid? Anyway, Tales of Witchcraft is a collection of chilling stories of witchery guaranteed to increase your pulse rate. It is peopled not only by wicked women and wily men, but by the most ordinary folk visited with strange powers. The stories have one thing in common. They are not explicable by resorting to, to rationality. Selected from the very best of the genre, this collection includes Jeu d'Esprit by authors such as E.F. Benson and Saki, who are better known for their more conventional writings, as well as stories by authors such as Stephen King, Robert Bloch, whose speciality is the weird and nightmarish. They all reveal that secret fascination for the uncertain and the unknown. And I look forward to getting to this. Um, I may save this until October 2021 for a spooky Halloween read. Well, um, the next one is uh, a true crime uh, story. It's um, a story that, that I uh, heard a podcast episode by a podcast called Skinwalker. That's a, a Scottish uh, podcast and all the crimes that they talk about happen in Scotland. Um, and this one is the story of a young woman who was murdered in the 1950s, I want to say, possibly 60s or maybe 70s. I can't remember, but yes. The young girl was married in a place called Carluk, um, and this is a story written by um, a, a criminologist who was a young boy living in the village at the time. Um, the, <laughs> the man that was put away uh, in prison wasn't the man that killed the young woman. Um, he... He he kind of was sort of led into confessing the crime because he was seen as um, different to everyone else. Uh, and yeah, so he spent like 27 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. And then when this gentleman, um, David Wilson, so this is Signs of Murder by David Wilson. Um, when this gentleman uh, went over the, the case notes again, he... Uh, narrowed it down to pe people that had been interviewed on the on the cul-de-sac where this took place, the, the street where it happened, and he he narrowed it down um, to like I think it was like three houses, um, and then the one one house that that this gentleman lived in, he'd been acting suspiciously at the time, but because the suspect that they had, they were pretty set on him, nothing was done about it. And the man that did kill the girl has since died and has never faced justice for what he did. And it's just, it's fascinating. It's morbid, but it's fascinating. Before David Wilson became the UK's preeminent criminologist, he was just a young boy growing up in the Scottish town of Carluk. As a child, the brutal murder of a young woman rocked this small community. But very quickly, a man was arrested for the crime convicted and put behind bars. For most, life slowly carried on, case closed. But the whispers in the town were that the young, sorry, that the wrong man was imprisoned. Whispers that grew and grew over the years to the point that any time David visited friends and acquaintances, they would ask in hushed tones, what are you going to do about the Carluk case? Carluk believed that a young man had been wrongly convicted. Forty years later, 
David realised it was time for him to find out if the whispers were correct. It was time for him to return home and find out the truth. And I just can't wait to get to it um, because it's true crime and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next one is just as a, a sort of the, the side of true crime that I, that I really enjoy. It's the forensics and the, the, the pathology of it all. Um, this is 30 second forensic science and it's edited by Sue Black and Neve Nick Dead. I think it's an Irish name and I've possibly just butchered it. Um, and the foreword is by Val McDermott, who is a very well-known crime writer um, from Scotland, I believe. Um, the 50 key topics revealing criminal investigation from behind the scenes, each explained in half a minute. Um, this just really is up my street. It's sort of like different aspects of crime. So like the like dyes and pigments and um, blood types and all this kind of thing. Video analysis and yeah, it's just, it sounds fab. Um, 30 Second Forensic Science provides a unique insight into the work behind the scenes to uncover unnatural deaths, human trafficking, poaching, environmental crime, drug smuggling, identity theft, and the dark world of cybercrime. Each of the 50 topics uses just 300 words and one picture to reveal the physical, chemical, and digital clues left at the scene of an investigation. From dental records to DNA, facial reconstruction to video analysis, here is a world of dogged de detection in which specialists perform dissection or facial reconstruction, analyse footwear or gait, recover samples, identify traces of toxins or explosives, match digital data and present the evidence in a court of law. This is the ideal introduction to the true masters of detection. I really can't wait to get stuck into this. Um, and I love that it has a sort of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, recycled feel to it. It's like recycled paper and it's fab. So the last one in this haul, um, in this part of the haul rather, is another book that I have multiple copies of. And this is one that I've toyed with on and off um, for a couple of months anyway. Um, it is... Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, illustrated by Chris Riddell, um, and it's obviously by Lewis Carroll. But this is just gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, the artwork is stunning. Um, let's get a really sort of gothy one, because Chris Riddell kind of does, it's like very gothic inspired art, um, and that's, that's one of them. The, there's a lot of like, pen line drawings, this is one of those, um, but there's also a lot of uh, coloured pictures as well. Um, that's the Cheshire Cat, and it's just, it's just lovely. I just absolutely adore it. How do you know I'm mad? said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. Alice didn't think that proved it at all. However, she went on. And how do you know, and how do you know that you're mad? To begin with, said the cat, a dog's not mad. You grant that? I suppose so, said Alice. Well then, the cat went on, you see a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. Now I growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I'm mad. I, oh, I love it so much. Oh. So, before I go on any tangents, I will just say thank you so much for watching. Join me soonish for part two. And um, yeah, I'll see you then. Whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe. And I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye bye.